Hi, this is Lionel Smith from Sense Memory. And tonight we're um, having a drink that was invented by Elizabeth Taylor and Rock Hudson in 1955 while they were on the set of the film Giant in Marfa, Texas. And um, there was nothing to do. It's a tiny nowhere town in the middle of Texas. So every night they had a little party and had different drinks and they got so bored they invented what is called the chocolate martini. And uh, it, what is in the chocolate martini is you have one and a half uh, ounces of van vanilla vodka, a half ounce of, oh, let's see, how do we go? Half ounce of Bailey's Irish cream, and a quarter of an ounce of the creme, creme de cacao, a little milk, I had a chocolate milk, and you shake it up and pour it in a glass drizzled with chocolate syrup. And um, so, in honor of that great film and those two wonderful um, American stars, Chocolate Martini, cheers. Oh, wow. Oh, boy. It's delicious. So I forgot to mention in my intro that Elizabeth Taylor and Rock Hudson, one night when they had chocolate martinis, they were a little tipsy and they were out of ice and it just happened to start hailing in Marfa, Texas that night. So they ran out with their martini glasses trying to catch big hailstones for their cocktail. So that's another aspect to the great chocolate martini story. Um, and in a theme of uh, Elizabeth Taylor, Tonight, I'm going to be reviewing a perfume that was inspired by Elizabeth Taylor by her dear friend, um, Vicki Teal. Now, Vicki Teal um, is a, a, a couture designer in Paris. She's the only woman couture designer who has been um, still working, has been working for about the last 50 years or so in Paris. She began in she began uh, designing in the early 60s, and she uh, is responsible. She's a woman who invented the miniskirt. And um, uh, she also was a costume designer and designed uh, for films and designed uh, costumes for um, a very famous uh, film called Candy and several other films. Um, and she became friends with Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton and was kind of taken under their wing and became a good friend. And um, Elizabeth knew that uh, Vicky was a big fan uh, of Coco Chanel. And just before Coco Chanel died one night, um, Elizabeth called up Vicky in Paris and said, listen, I'm having dinner. Will you come over and join me? And uh, I'm, it's just going to be us. So when she got there, she was very surprised to discover that when she walked in, there sitting on the couch was... Coco Chanel. She got to meet her idol. And she's, uh, um, later in the evening, at one point, Coco Chanel took uh, Vicky's hand and took Elizabeth's hand and looked him in the eye and said, look, I want to tell you something. I make clothes. Um, I, I, I'm very famous for that and I make a lot of money, but where the real money is, is in perfume. And both of you should make your own perfume. And they did. They both did. Elizabeth did. Elizabeth started her, her perfume uh, career in the mid-80s, and Vicky started hers around the same time. So uh, the perfume, perfume we're going to be uh, exploring tonight is a new perfume. It came out in, in uh, 2013, and it is called um, 21 Bonaparte. And uh, there is the box. This, I... I have their Vicky Teal, 21 Bonaparte. 21 Bonaparte is the address of her uh, couturier and her shop uh, in Paris. And uh, her partner in, uh, in it was Elizabeth Taylor. She helped her out with that. And they um, had this wonderful shop, which still exists in Paris. Um, the perfume, I got a rollerball sample. 
and there you can see the perfume bottle, which I'll put a picture up, is beautiful. It's purple. And as I said, it was inspired by uh, Elizabeth Taylor. And of course, purple was her favorite color. And how it came in, the inspiration came to Vicki Teal was in 1967, the night of the Oscars, Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton were both nominated as Best Actor and Best Actress in a film called Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. Uh, Elizabeth won and Richard did not. Uh, when Richard didn't win, he's one of the uh, actors with the most nominations who've never never won an Oscar. She, Elizabeth r was really pissed. She uh, They were in the south of France at this incredible villa on the sea, and there was a staircase going out of uh, off the terrace down to the sea. And Elizabeth got up and just had to get out of the house, and she ran down to the beach. And um, Vicky was nervous about her and worried, a little worried about her, so she followed her. And as she was going down this great marble staircase to the beach, she noticed that in the midnight air, she was surrounded by the smell of tuberoses and gardenias and jasmine. And she stopped and she looked around. She was completely surrounded on both sides by these incredible flowers. And she made a mental note, mental note to herself that night that someday she was going to use those scents in a perfume. And finally, in the year 2013, many, many years after that night, she did make this perfume. Now, the notes in this perfume are, the top notes are cassis, uh, creme, mandarin, and star anise. The heart notes are sambac, jasmine, gardenia, and tuberose. And uh, the base is patchouli, vanilla, and sandalwood. Um, and I'm going to put it on and test it. I've tested it before. And I have to tell you, it is an incredibly beautiful, beautiful fragrance. Now, it starts off a little sweet, a little too sweet for me. And at first, when I smelled it, I thought, oh, this isn't going to work for me. But already, it's, that sweetness is going away. And what you're left with is this, this incredible, uh, rich mandarin and anise uh, flavor, that the kind of um, licorice blended in with that mandarin and as the heart notes come up there's this beautiful beautiful gardenia now gardenia is something that uh, perfumers cannot extract from the flower they have to recreate the smell of a gardenia by using other flowers and that they often use the tuberose so that's why the tuberose is in this particular scent um, and it is photorealistic it is so incredibly beautiful and um, I will tell you that I've had some friends who are in the business try this out and I didn't tell them who it was by or anything about it and they absolutely flipped over it really really found it to be an exquisite exquisite uh, perfume now uh, uh, in the base notes what comes up is a, a really warm patchouli and there's a, a vanilla that's blended in there and a very creamy sandalwood. Now, what I find interesting is this is a, a perfume marketed to women, but that patchouli mixed in with that really creamy vanilla and that sandalwood give it a masculine edge. And it's a gardenia that a man can wear. I, I, I find it really a unisex perfume that uh, would work well for women and for men. Of course, um, not every guy's going to like it, uh, but but there it's there for you to try, and I I wouldn't pass it up. At least get a sample and try it, uh, and see what you think. And if you don't like, you know, get the little roller ball. And if you don't like it, give it to your girlfriend, your wife, your mother, your sister, whoever. Um, now, the occasion for this, I would say, right off the bat, of course, you're going to say evening and formal because it's a a beautiful. Um, I forgot to mention, it's, it's classification is oriental floral, but it, it gives you that impression right off the bat. But I always, I always think, you know, what the hell? Something that is so formal can really be kicked around with a pair of blue jeans and in the case of a woman, you know, something casual. Just make that, that smart little twist uh, between what is expected and what is not expected and wear something formal with a, a casual outfit. It really uh, can give you a kind of edge, uh, an interesting edge, and I find that fascinating often when people do that. Now, the longevity, this goes, uh, it's really good. It goes from 10 to 12 hours. I First time I put it on, I put it on in the evening, and the next morning, 
when I woke up, there it was. It was still there. Beautiful. And that dry down is just incredible. It, its projection is heavy um, in the very beginning for the first couple of hours, and it moves to a kind of medium, maybe about this close. Um, and that, that, I think, is really nice. Now, the availability, uh, it's only sold on Home Shopping Network in the United States, HSN. I don't know if it's sold also in Europe on the HSN stations in Britain, for instance, but you can certainly check it out. Um, I wish that, that Vicky had it uh, available as she has her other scents, some, some of which um, uh, are um, Serene from 1994, Ulysses, which is a wonderful masculine uh, fragrance that she made, her only male scent, but it's beautiful. And Contour, she's made for Contour and for Destiny. Um, so in summing up, I would say uh, it's just an incredible, rich, exotic, exciting, sensuous, very sensuous uh, fragrance. And it's good for men and for women because like I say, don't wear what they say you should wear, but wear what you love. This is Leonard Smith, and I'll talk to you later. Cheers.